The Assyrian came down like the wolf on the fold, and his cohorts were gleaming in purple and gold. And the sheen of their spears was like stars on the sea, and the blue wave rolls nightly on deep Galilee. Like the leaves of the forest when summer is green, that host with their banners at sunset were seen. Like the leaves of the forest when autumn hath blown, that host on the morrow lay withered and strown. For the angel of death spread his wings on the blast, and breathed in the face of the foe as he passed. And the eyes of the sleepers waxed deadly and chill, and their hearts but once heaved and forever grew still. Lord Byron published this once world-famous poem 200 years ago, in 1815. It describes the Assyrian attack on the kingdom of Judah in 701 BCE. In Byron's time, the only contemporary information about the mighty Assyrian empire was the Bible. A mere 30 years later, the exploration of the Assyrian heartland in today's northern Iraq began. These discoveries brought to light this empire's capital cities with their temples and palaces containing libraries and archives with many thousands of original texts. These texts were inscribed on clay tablets in the enigmatic cuneiform script. When the combined efforts of military officers, museum clerks, clergymen and inventors led to its decipherment in 1857, a wealth of information became available that allows us to approach the Assyrian Empire on its own terms. I'm Karen Radner, Professor of the Ancient History of the Near and Middle East here at the University of Munich. In my six-week course, Organizing an Empire the Assyrian Way, I hope to share my passion for this ancient state with you. How was this first world empire able to possess unprecedented holdings that reached from the Mediterranean Sea to Western Iran and to exercise control over regions in Asia, Europe and Africa? How did it manage to maintain stability for 300 years? Why did it come to inspire the sentiments as expressed in Byron's poem? We can approach answers to these questions and more because of the treasure trove of original Assyrian texts. They also allow us to encounter people who lived and died more than two and a half thousand years ago as individuals whose dreams, hopes and anxieties mirror our own. Like in this poem from the 7th century BCE that laments the death of a beloved wife in childbirth. Why are you adrift like a boat in the midst of the river? Your crossbars in pieces, your mooring rope cut, your face covered, you cross the river of the inner city. How could I not be adrift? How could my mooring rope not be cut? The day I bore the fruit, how happy was I? Happy was I, happy my husband. The day of my going into labor, my face became darkened, the day of my giving birth, my eyes became clouded. With open hands I prayed to the mother goddess, you too have born a child, save my life. Hearing this, the mother goddess veiled her face, O oh child, why do you keep praying to me? My husband who loved me uttered a cry, why do you take from me the wife in whom I rejoiced? All those many days I was with my husband, I lived with him who was my lover. Death came creeping into my bedroom, it drove me from my house, it tore me from my husband, it set my feet into the land of the dead. 